All right, good morning, millionaires. Good morning, millionaires. Get this joint out my face. Give me a replay, gang, if you're watching the replay. My name's Azik Ali. This is definitely an episode that you're probably going to want to turn. Different uh, teammates, son. Uh, Upline, downline, cross, cr cross line, close line. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you know anybody with a home-based business, this is going to be really helpful for them. Mrs. Goins is in the house. What's up, queen? Um, hope everybody feels incredible. Um... Um, all right. <laughs> There's always uh all kinds of magic going on when you when you're running a business. All right, if you didn't join the text message system, that's it down there at the bottom. Let's get it. You have something special, you have greatness in you. Hello, this is Les Brown, and you're in the right place at the right time because we're gonna bring the millionaire out of you. That's a fact. We're going to bring the millionaire out of you, baby. Thank you. We're going to bring the... Uh, uh, Please uh, announce yourself. Let them know what city you're from. All participants are muted. Let them know what kind of business you got. Let's get it. Entry and exit tones are off. All right, uh, good morning, millionaires. Good morning, millionaires. My name is Azik Ali. I'm a revenue acceleration coach. Uh, I'm a self-esteem development fanatic, starting with my own. You know what I mean? And every day we're here to give you information that helps you go further faster with less effort as it relates to your business. Further faster with less effort. Um, I always, when I'm training, I give people this little kind of test j just so you can see how you don't know what you don't know, <laughs> right? Um, let, let me ask you something. What's more important to you? What's more important to you? Finding the perfect prospects for whatever kind of business you have, or is it more important to you knowing what to say uh, when you bump into somebody? Um, which one of those do you think is more important? Number one or number two? Let, let me see it in the comments. My man, David Ruffin in the house. My man, Dennis Thicklin is in the building. Rhonda, good morning, queen. Jessica Graham is in here. What's up, Jessica L? Franny's in the house. All right, let's get it, y'all. Let's get it. Um, which one do y'all think is more important? Is it more important, Cassandra, that you find the exact prospect you're looking for? Or is it more important that you know what to say when you find them. Which one is more important? Which one is more important? Uh, we got different people, salams. We got different people, um, you know, saying they're equally important. Some people are like it's knowing what to say. Let me see it. What do y'all think is the most important? Is it most important to be able to find the perfect prospects for you? You know, in the Kaizen Academy, we have a whole three-part course on that. And like one of the first ones is finding ready to join prospects, right? And all these cool things like we teach you about influence and how, you know, uh, uh, who you are is a lot of times more important than even what you say. You know, this is why we say you got to be before you'll do before you'll have. Right. So we talked a little bit about that, um, you know, uh, how how, you know, if the doctor tells you that he just started a coffee business, you all of a sudden want to join a coffee business. The doctor don't know nothing about business. He's been spending all this time learning how to cut into bodies and stuff. But you believe him because he has influence. Like Michael Jordan don't know nothing about boxer shorts, but we buy the boxer shorts because Michael Jordan has influence in the world of basketball. It's so weird the brain does that, right? <laughs> but that's one of the many, many ways the brain works that you can leverage so that you can create more uh, abundance for yourself. You got to learn the laws of the game. You got to be able to play the game according to the rules, right? Wouldn't it help you a little bit more? If you understood that this 64 square board you're in front of is actually a chess board when you've been playing checkers, well, wouldn't it be helpful for you to know that over here in this country, when we say football, we're talking about pigskin and a hundred yard field versus over there when they say football, they're talking about soccer. Isn't this useful to know? You need to know what game you're playing before you can win. And the reason I pointed that out to you is that it ain't even close, y'all. 
the most important piece between being able to find a perfect prospect, y'all, and being able to know what to say is absolutely knowing what to say. You want me to prove it to you? Check this out. All prospects are neutral. All prospects you run into are neutral. There's no such thing as a good prospect or a bad prospect. I'll prove it to you real quick. If me and you go to the mall and you don't know anything about what it is I do, and I say, watch this. I say, pick somebody out the crowd. You pick up a random person, and then I walk up to him and I hand him a $50 bill. Is that person going to get mad at me or are they going to be happy? Now, they might say some little stuff like, this is too good to be true or what's the catch, or they start looking around for the hidden cameras. But a lot of them are going to be happy and just accept it. Is that fair? But check this out. If we walk into the mall and we find a random person and then I just <laughs> punch him in the nose, Aren't they going to have a slightly different reaction? But check it out. What was more important? Who I picked out or what I said or did to get the reaction? Here's what I want you to write in the comments. All prospects are neutral. We're the ones that make them good or bad. We're the ones that make them good or bad. Somebody give me that in the comments. All prospects are neutral. We make them good or bad. We make them good or bad with what we do or say. I hope I ain't losing nobody. Y'all with me? There are four core skills in this world of, of home-based business. Sometimes we talk about brick and mortar. Sometimes we talk about click and order. Sometimes we talk about traditional businesses. Sometimes we talk about home-based businesses. This morning, we talk about home-based businesses. And what I want you to understand is that all prospects are neutral. I make them good or bad, baby. We make them good prospects. We make them bad prospects. If that's really making sense to you, type that out and give me a share. All prospects are neutral. What we say or do makes them good or bad. They're all coming in, just they're all reactive. If I smile, you're going to smile back. If I frown, you're going to frown back. That's how it goes. We have something called mirror neurons in our mind. And I won't get into all of that right now, but you naturally give back the energy you receive. All prospects are neutral. We make them good or bad. And one of the biggest tools you have in your ice, in your appreciate that, Jessica L. Thank you, Hadassah, for the shares. I really appreciate that, y'all. Check it out. The number one tool that you have in your kit is the icebreaker. The icebreaker. It is absolutely essential. This is one of the four core skills. You have uh, icebreakers. You have uh, a presentation skills. You have the ability to build rapport. You have closing. Those are the four main skills you need to know. But it's impossible for you to sell or sponsor if you don't have anybody interested in what you do. How do you get them? You use the icebreaker. It's an instrument of persuasion, y'all, that lets us insert our business into normal conversation without it feeling awkward. That's the definition of an icebreaker. Somebody write that down. It's an instrument that allows you to insert your business into the conversation without it being awkward. Somebody write that down and give me a share. An icebreaker is a tool that allows us to insert our business into normal conversation without it feeling awkward. The icebreaker moves the conversation from social chit chat to business in an acceptable way. It moves from small talk into bag talk. You get what I mean? It moves into talks about the weather into talks about whether we gonna win. You hear what I'm saying to you? <laughs> um, but here's the thing. The icebreaker we use on a, on a youngin is different from the icebreaker we would use from an elder, right? If we're talking to an elder, we're gonna talk a little different from if we're talking to somebody who just now graduated high school. Am I making sense? Um, there are icebreakers that are going to rock with young people. There are icebreakers that are going to rock with more mature prospects. Um, and, 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 and I'm going to tell you something. It's very important. One of the main things that you can do, no matter what kind of business you have out there, I'm going to tell you one of the main things you can do to make more money this week. And that is start to segment your business. Stop trying to do one size fits all marketing. Somebody say it in the, in the, in the comments, so I'm making sure you get me. One size don't fit all. Give me a share. 
when it comes to marketing, one size don't fit all. <laughs> what do I mean? You know how you'll just get a hat and then you're going to just, you know, one size fits all, right? That ain't how marketing works. You better talk to me in this world of automation where everybody got me talking to robots and stuff. What do you think is more important, y'all? If I say attention entrepreneurs or if I say attention single mom entrepreneurs who have been funding their business out their own pocket, which one is going to be more effective? Everybody hear me? Which, which one going to make you? you like, they're talking to me if you're a single mother. You get what I mean? What if I say attention, entre, attention single mom entrepreneurs who have three kids or more? Which is going to be more effective? Their message is just talking to entrepreneurs. We're, we're all trying to get married. Mary has three kids. She's overworked. Who's going to reach her into a deeper level? The one that says, attention, female entrepreneurs. Or the one that says, attention, female, on, uh, single mother entrepreneurs with three, three or more kids. Y'all get what I'm saying? One size don't fit all. You want to learn different types of icebreakers for different types of audiences. So I'm going to give you a few for younger prospects. I'm going to give you a few for uh, more mature prospects. I want you to jot these down, um, especially if one strikes your chord. Your, your commitment is to write it in the comments and then share it on your timeline. So that way a year from now, it shows up in your memories and you can remember this and you can see like how far you've come in a year. Everybody, get, that's a good deal. We got a deal. All right, here we go. If I'm talking to a younger prospect, here are a bunch of examples that I can use to switch the conversation from small talk to bag talk. <laughs> switch the conversation from the weather <laughs> to whether they want to win or not. <laughs> you ready? All right, here we go. Everybody ready? All right, here we go. Um, um, some of y'all going to use this on your kids. Some of y'all going to use this on your friends' kids. Some of y'all going to use this on your coworkers. Some of y'all going to use this uh, 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 on, on the people you in school with, you know what I mean? It's beautiful. All right, all right. Here, here's one of my favorite for young people. Um, I show students how to pay off their college debt before they finish school. You know, you ask them what they do, they talk. Then they finally ask you what you do. Oh, you've been waiting. And then you hit them with, oh, I show young people how to pay off their college debt before they finish school. Y'all see how next they got to be like, tell me more. You see that? They got to beg you for a presentation. Is that making sense? What if I said this to a young person? After you finish your degree, do you really want a job? Or would you rather stay home and get paid to text people with social media? Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Uh, uh, what's, the third, what's the third example? Uh, um, I'm just curious. Do you want to work for 40 to 45 years like your parents did? Would you like to be able to retire in five to 10 years? What are they going to say? You see how to now they start to beg you for more information? Y'all get that? You get that? Uh, uh, what if I walk up to a younger person and then I'm like, um, because you got to understand, you're talking to young people about uh, retiring. and see, That sounds like a thousand years away you got to watch how you talk to people who are younger you know what i mean once you start to hit your 30s your 40s your 50s your 60s the stuff that that sounds important to you that, that ain't even relevant to like somebody in their 20s or somebody is like in in their teens you get what i mean uh so what if what if i said to you if, if you're younger i said something like uh do you want to work five days a week and have two day weekends or work two days a week and, and, and take a five day weekend? Imagine that. Imagine that. Everybody see? Now, um, my favorite out of all of those is to retire in five to 10 years. Retire in five to 10 years. Yeah, that's exactly right, Dennis. It's like psychological science. That's why we call it entrepreneurology. That's why our Facebook group is entrepreneur nourishment like like our whole thing is like not just the mindset of the entrepreneur but also uh the way the brain works <laughs> that's why we say entrepreneurology like i'm an entrepreneurologist it's the entrepreneur mindset but then it's the neurology how the mind actually works so let's say we're talking to more mature prospects i know i was talking too fast y'all barely typed any in the comments but i'm with you i know y'all are with me y'all are writing notes right now which is really smart so if i'm talking to mature prospects i might come more like this 
Um, and you're going to see the differences right away. So I walk up to him. You know, I'm talking to one of my mature prospects. I'm like, you know how we work and work. And at age 65, we can think about retiring on a pension that's less than what we could barely live on when we were working full time. Well, I just found out how we can retire in five years at full pay. What can they say? But tell me more. Meanwhile, you done changed the subject. They're like, man, did you see that game last night? And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What did you just now say, right? Everybody with me? You got to learn the art of just dropping a little something and then being out. You know what I mean? You out. You done hit it. Now they got to call you back like, whoa, what was that? You ever talk to somebody and be like, never mind. Now they're like, what? 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 What was you going to say? What? You can't do that. What? <laughs> right? Everybody with me? Y'all with me for real? Or y'all just pretending y'all with me? Let me see some fire emojis if this is helping you so far. Give me some fire emojis and a share if this is making sense to you. Um, here's another one for, for a more mature prospect. What if I was like, I show retired people how to get an extra paycheck every month without getting a part-time job like a Walmart greeter. Whoa. Whoa. What about that, y'all? What about that? What if I say, I show retired people how to get an extra paycheck every month without getting a part-time job like a Walmart greeter? How are you going to get specific and mention a Walmart greeter? Whoa. How are you going to do that? That ain't right. All right, check it out. What about this one? What about this one? Well, you know how the bills we paid over the years meant we couldn't save as much as we wanted for retirement? I just found out how to get a second paycheck in retirement without getting a part-time job. What can they say? But whoa. Y'all get me? Y'all get me? Uh, you don't see the option to share because you're in a Facebook group. But yeah, yeah, I'm glad y'all getting something out of this. Them fire emojis coming through. All right, so let me just give you a couple formulas before we get out of here. I'm going to give you a couple formulas. I'm going to give you a couple formulas. Everybody ready? Somebody say, give me five formulas. Give me five formulas so I know you're ready. Somebody say, give me five formulas and then give me a share. Give me five formulas and I'm going to give you five of them. That's exactly right, Kevin. Telling ain't selling, baby. Matter of fact, facts tell, but stories is what do the selling. And what we just did was tell them a little story. I just now found out. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know how the bills we paid over the years made it so we couldn't save as much as we wanted for retirement? I just now found out. how. To, you see how that's a little mini story? I just now found out how we could get a second paycheck in retirement without getting a part-time job. Okay, y'all ready for the five formulas? Let's go. Let's go. My favorite out of those was a Walmart greeter. My favorite out the first set was a retire in five to 10 years. Call me crazy, but those are my favorites. But here are some formulas for you. Here are five of them. Number one, I just found out plus great benefit. Somebody write that down and give me a share. I just found out plus a great benefit, right? I just found out a way that any business owner can get $50,000 in guaranteed funding. But anyway, did you see that game last night? They're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Because now I don't sound like I'm selling because I'm anxious to hurry up and switch the subject. Everybody with me? Skill set, skill set. This ain't so much the mindset. I know you're positive. This ain't so much the heart set. I know you're grateful. This is skill set. 80% of it is a mindset. But who wants to get 80% across the ocean in a raft? You know what I'm saying? Skill set, baby, skill set. I just found out, plus great benefit. Here's formula number two. Here's formula number two. Would it be okay if, and then great benefit, great benefit that you offer. Um, would it be okay if we got you um, a bunch of different loan applications that don't ding your credit so you can see if you even qualify for funding? Would that be okay? Would it be okay if we uh, got you into position to improve your finances without you having to mail all the letters, without you having to buy envelopes and stamps, would that be okay? Do you hear how when I say, would it be okay, you just relax? Isn't that a little bit different from would you be interested in? <laughs> this is what we call trained language. Here's the third one. 
I show people how to, and then you solve a problem. Remember when we said, I show people how to pay off their student loans before they even get out of college. But Joe, can you believe what just now happened with the Supreme Court decision? Maybe we wouldn't say that because that might take them away from what we just said because that's too big. Nah, don't say that. Let's stick to the weather. <laughs> but man, how hot was it yesterday? <laughs> All right. All right. Everybody with me? So that's three of them so far. It's three of them so far. Yeah, th yeah, these are the hours. I appreciate that. If you're looking for the hours, we're here every morning. Those are the hours. But also, you can just text message. You can just join the text message system down there. Um, just, just text message at Mill Mind to the number 81010. Y'all see that down there? Text message at Mill Mind to the number 81010. And you can join the email list, wearemillionaireminded.com. That'll put you in a newsletter. Um, I'm just curious. And, and then a real dope benefit. I'm just curious. And then a dope benefit. That's an icebreaker. Right? Uh, um, well, 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 you know how, and then you, you mention a problem. I just found out, and then you solve a problem. That's a formula. So let's just say I'm like, um, you know how when you start off at the job, it's fun, but then it starts getting boring because you feel like you're doing the same thing every single day. Well, I just found out a way that every single day can be exciting. Every single day can be a payday. And every single day I get to sleep good at night knowing I help the community. It's just been amazing. But man, hasn't it been hot? See, because when people tell you no, they don't say no. They say stuff like, oh, well, you know, I just bought a new car. You want to come take a ride with me? Or they say, Oh man, well, um, I sure am hungry. Want to get a bite? Or or they or they say something like, boy, my feet sure hurt. They just change the subject because they don't like saying no and being rude. You got to know how to hear no. And once you hear no, you just move on. They don't want to fix the problem. They good, cool. But you also got to know how to hear yes, which sounds like, tell me more, or how does it work? Or like, man, I might know a couple people are like, well, 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 what did you mean by that? You see what I mean? They're saying yes. They're asking you for more. Um, here's one of my favorite formulas. Write this down. What are your two biggest blank problems? You know how certain people never complain? They, they so positive, right? They just got no issues. So what if you ask them what's their two biggest problems with their job? What if you get in an Uber and you're like, so what are your two biggest problems driving Uber? Or like, hey, I'm doing a little survey. What are your two biggest problems working in this hotel? Hey, um, so man, I'm just curious. What's what's your two biggest problems being a valet? You know, we're doing this, we're doing this class, we're doing this project for class. What are your two biggest uh valet worker problems? What what are your two biggest problems working here at this restaurant as a valet? You see that? We got formulas now. Which one was your favorite? Let me see it in the comments. Let me see it in the comments. We about to get out of here. On my clock, we got about eight more minutes. Let me see what your favorite formula was. Let me see what your favorite formula was. Tanisha was like, I'm just curious. What are your two biggest problems with? Okay, a lot of people like the, what are your two biggest problems with? Good, good, good. I like that. And I like how some of you are going in and, and already putting in your own sort of benefits, your own product benefits. That's really smart. We now have the ability to create hundreds of unique icebreakers, y'all. We can now do that. And once we get used to using them, we can even create them on the fly. You'll be talking to somebody. You'll just think of it right there because you see clearly what to insert into the formula based on what they do or who they are, right? Um, this is the way that you introduce your business in any social conversation without it feeling awkward, without you having to feel embarrassed, right? Um, to the prospect, it's the icebreaker that does the selling, not us. 
And that's why it's the perfect way to build your business is zero rejection. It's the perfect way to teach your teammates when they're brand new how to do it, where they just dip their toe in and they don't have to fully commit to it so it feels awkward. You just get to throw it out there and see if they bite. Everybody with me? We call them icebreakers, but they're more like bait. It's more like a hook and some bait. <laughs> you just try to see if they go for it. You know what I mean? You're throwing it in the line. You're throwing the line in the water, baby. All right. Hope everybody got something out of that. It's affirmation time. Let's get it. Repeat after me. You know, this, this is really important, y'all. Um, you got to learn to say your affirmations. You got to learn to do them daily because it changes everything for you. A lot of times it's not the information. It's your self-image. You know, a lot of times we think it's the information. We want more of the how-to. But I'm going to tell you, the most vital part is the who is. <laughs> it's the who is. Like, if you walk up to me talking about, you know, some product or service, and the town wino walks up to me telling me about some product or I'm just going to, you You got a better shot because he smells like liquor and it's 10 a.m. You see what I mean? So it's not so much the how to. Oh, he could be saying all the perfect words, but he smells like liquor. You get what I mean? A lot of times it ain't the how to. It's the who is. It's the who is. You may come up to me and ask me for some money, but then this little three-year-old, you know, beautiful little girl comes up and asks me for some money, right? And, and she's going to get the money out me quicker than you. No offense to you. You know what I mean? Why? Because a lot of times it ain't the how to, it's the who is. Who is doing the communicating? Who is doing the thinking? Who is doing the problem solving? Who is doing the icebreaker, right? And so now we're going to work on who we are. It's time to work on our self-concept. It's time to work on our self-image. We call them affirmations. Repeat after me, millionaires. If your phone line tries to charge you to call in, just text message call me to the same exact number. And it'll be there. Was this helpful? Scale of one to 10. Let me see if this was helpful. Scale of one to 10. How, how helpful was this? 10 was I'm going to use it. One is I didn't understand anything about today's class. Scale of one to 10. How y'all feel? Scale of one to 10. Scale of one to 10. Let's get it. And um, put your favorite icebreaker in the comments so that you cement it into your consciousness. Cement it into your consciousness. You know? Get that thing cemented inside. Get that thing. I, I don't want you to try to learn all five. I just want you to pick your favorite. Pick your favorite one. Pick your favorite one. Let's get it. Okay, D, I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see that. Yeah, Dr. Hernandez is in the house. Pastor Dandridge. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. I'm glad to see that. All right, let's get it. All right, millionaires, we out of here. We out of here. Repeat after me. Say it like you mean it. I am so happy and grateful. That money comes to me easily 